Welcome back to Tech Total Access. I'm Katie Leeper, keeping you updated as we Hokies hunker down. In the effort to stop further spread of the coronavirus, Virginia Tech moved all classes online for the remainder of the semester. Students and professors shared their thoughts about the swiftness of action taken by Virginia Tech. At first I thought it was a drastic change, but now as everything's shutting down and they predict that this is going to last longer than I expected, I think it probably was necessary, especially since if we came back, someone could still have it and it could still travel through the campus. I think the transition to online is hard enough and having to transition online then back to in lecture probably would have been pretty tricky. But that being said, I feel like they almost pulled the trigger a little too quickly and maybe should have done two or three weeks online, see how the virus progresses, and then make decisions from there. I feel like it was smart to just kind of nip it in the butt, just if someone is, like, leaving or out of state. Like, they should definitely have the choice to be able to go home. I also think if the university takes it seriously, it makes it easier for students to take it seriously. I think that it was pretty necessary for them to move it online. Um, just seeing, like, everything that has shifted within, like, our nation and just globally, there has been a big push for social distancing. And so I think if our school had prolonged it and done like a week by week thing to see how things were, I think it, it inevitably was going to get worse. So it was a good thing that they took the precautions and just like moved everything online as soon as possible because it also gave students um, and professors a week to at least try and adjust their schedules in the rest of the semester to be able to make that switch online i think that they needed to i think that they kind of had to because of all the state regulations and everything like working together with uva and william and mary and um other public schools like i think that that, that was the best solution um i think they're more concerned about our health and so um it shows more that virginia tech cares about us that they're doing this and it's a sacrifice like they're losing a lot of money from this too so it's not just like we're losing a lot um i just i think that it was probably the right decision for them because they didn't know how bad this virus could get. If we'll ever know the exact answer because if things turn out well and we have a lot of Hokies who stay healthy, then everybody's going to say it was the right call, right? Uh, If people who are planning to graduate still graduate, they're going to be happy, right? Um, How many students wind up dropping a class that they wouldn't have otherwise dropped? I don't know. But um, we've never seen anything like this before. And so I think, at least at this point, is better to err or to err uh, on the side of caution. You think about the hokey plague that we normally have in the spring, you know, uh, and if one person in a residence hall got the coronavirus, what would that be like? I mean, just a cluster of, and then if if a student died, or if you had several students that died, so. I think in a sense they had no choice uh, and yet hindsight may prove that to be right or it may it may prove to have been a bad decision. Although Virginia Tech highly recommended students to move off campus and offered them $1,000 as a refund for housing costs, freshmen could choose to stay in their dorms. When you read the emails, I said that it was obviously very recommended that you go home unless there was an issue with Wi-Fi, there was an issue with health. And for me, my father's in the military. And so before the coronavirus was even really blown up and everybody heard about it, my dad already knew it was going on because all of his sailors are constantly traveling or flying. So they were coming back with it before it ever got really big. And so it was already a known health concern in my house. So there's a possibility he could get it. And I also don't really have really good Wi-Fi at my house. So that's why I came back. And whenever I registered for housing, you never had to put an exact reason, but it was up to your own discretion if you would come back or not. And so I felt that I was safer here at Virginia Tech and I could do better here. Caitlin explained why she feels more safe staying at Virginia Tech. I don't think anybody's truly safe. I mean, obviously virus is very easy to spread and there's no way to tell if you have the symptoms super early. Um, by the time you're showing those symptoms, there's you can't really, you know, it's not irreversible and there isn't an antibiotic for it because it is a virus. 
Um, I think that I definitely am safer here at Virginia Tech just because of my home environment. Plus, if I were home, personally, I know that I would still be seeing my fiance at home. And because if I lived at home, he'd probably live at home, too. And his dad is a commercial airplane pilot. (laughs) So (laughs) I would not only have the military father, but I'd have my fiance's father who's constantly going on planes. I would have way higher chances if I were home. Um, And I think being here at Virginia Tech, there are less people. And I have less chance of just wanting to go out and see friends. So it helps me self-isolate more. And I'm definitely taking more precautions and washing your hands and making sure you're sanitizing and Lysoling. So I'm trying to be as smart as possible, but, you know, I can still get it. There's no way of really telling. As a result of Virginia Tech moving to online course instruction, both students and professors had to adjust their learning and teaching styles. At first, I was excited. It kind of felt like a snow day. We were going to be able to do classes at home. And now that it's actually started, it's I realized it's going to take a lot of self-discipline and self-motivation, and it's going to be a lot of work to do it online. So the transition's been rather difficult, I would say. It was interesting figuring out how tests were going to work, but the professors worked pretty well to get it all ironed out before our first couple tests. It has been difficult, but I'm getting there. Thankfully, I already had some online classes that I've done, and so it wasn't a totally new concept. I feel a lot worse for students that this is their first ever online time. Um... I know the professors, they're still trying to figure things out for me. Like, all my syllabuses aren't finished and updated. Um, So that's a big thing. I'm still trying to figure out what we're really doing because my professors don't know either. So I'm just taking it day by day. Overall, I think teachers have been pretty accommodating because they don't want to be in this position either. So they're trying their best to help us out. A lot of my professors have had to change their entire syllabi because of it. I think my professors have been at probably the perfect perfect amount like not sending way too many emails that things are getting lost but not keeping me in the dark you know keeping things very concise so gotta give them props for that one i guess time will tell whether or not it was successful um at least everything's showing up on canvas and is working okay so far i used um in part videos that i had already recorded for an online class that i teach in the summer so I use something called Camtasia and what it allows you to do is uh, in essence voice overs for PowerPoint sort of full screen capture and you can hear uh, yourself as you're talking go back and edit problem is I didn't know how to edit before the, the shutdown you know we did get through all of really the hands on things they've used the pH meters they've used the glassware so we did at least sneak in quite a bit of that before this hit So I'm feeling like I'm really trying to just get something that I think is more educational than just do this lab. (laughs) But no matter how much effort professors put into helping students succeed in their online classes, it's entirely up to the student whether or not to participate. I'm putting in modules and I open the module Monday at 8 a.m. And then I give them till Sunday at 10 p.m. So hopefully those kids that are balancing a lot of things, are that makes it easier for them to knock out the work when there's time. It's going to be interesting to see who uses the Zoom link and, and participates. The students that uh, so far have participated in those, typically the students who are doing well in classes and who would normally show up um, for a review session. You know, it's kind of like the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. I don't know. Um, Those students who are good students, who have good time management skills, don't procrastinate, know how to prioritize, they may be fine. While most students initially thought not going to class was the best thing ever, some are concerned they won't do as well in the online learning environment. I mean, obviously I enjoy not having to go to class. I just don't like the fact that I don't have that daily structure. And... You know, uh, that's like something that motivates me as a student. Like, you go to class, you have these times in between classes where I usually do my homework, and there's always these strict deadlines, but now it seems like the deadlines have been extended, and it gives students more time to procrastinate, and when you're not forced to go to class and have attendance grades, I don't think a lot of people actually will go, participate. I mean, I've never taken an online class before, so it's been kind of tricky, and a lot of my professors are have been, like, 
testing out different methods between switching from live lectures to never mind, I'm just going to post a recording. So it's been a little bit rocky, but I think we're all trying to figure it out and they know as much as we do of what's going on. So just trying to be understanding, but hopefully it'll get a little bit smoother as the weeks go on. Honestly, there hasn't been any sort of audio disruptions or any like awkward moments or anything like that. Obviously, it's not the same as being in class, but it's been pretty smooth. I pretty much haven't really been learning much. Um, there's not a lot to do. So it's not like normally when like you go to classes and you get a lot of information out of it. Like if there's an online class, it feels like everything's really slow. It's been um, not too hard because I feel like I've taken some online classes in the past before at Virginia Tech. Um, so that aspect has been a little bit easy being able to like, um, coordinate out time for myself to be able to work in an online environment. Um, however, having like all of my classes online has been a little bit difficult just because a lot of teachers have varying, um, styles of teaching and some are better in person versus others that like struggle to teach online. Like I feel like I'm not learning, like I'm not getting an education. Like a lot of these classes I'm taking actually are relevant to my like major and what I want to do after college and like my internship this summer. So it kind of screws me in that aspect that like I can't actually learn these things because I'm not going to, no one's going to. For me, it's been pretty okay because I had two online classes previously, um, but the other three are kind of difficult to transfer online. So one of them gave me an option of just finishing in the next week. Um, the other one, he canceled all tests and gave us papers instead. It's definitely different. Um, for what I know is um, waking up and actually going to classes, it took a lot of like, you know, just waking up. That was pretty much the hardest part. But now that it's online, it's more of like my responsibility. And so far, I feel like I'm really crushing it. I made my own calendar, made my own schedule. So, so far, I'm doing pretty good. I felt like I was getting a lot more lazy. <laughs> I kind of like would wake up, I would go to like, wake up maybe like two minutes before the class, log on to Zoom, and then just like, once I'm done with my class, I close my laptop, go back to bed, and like half of my classes aren't even on Zoom, they'll post the lectures later, and I'll watch it in my own time, so I feel like if anything, I'm, I might be even a little bit more lazy. My major is a little more difficult because, especially for architecture, uh, our major surrounds more on like person to person critiques. So being online is not the same experience. And especially for my professor who doesn't like technology. So he's been struggling with video chatting and all that. Because of these fears, the university has developed additional options for course grading and assessment. The last day to drop a course without penalty has been extended to April 15th for both graduate and undergraduate students. Undergraduate students may either choose to continue with the A through F grading option or select a new credit non-credit grade system for each course they are enrolled in until the last day of spring semester. This will give students adequate time to acclimate to the online learning environment and make a more informed decision regarding course grading. For the new credit non-credit option, students receive credit for the course, but the grade does not calculate into their GPA. The grades in the credit non-credit option are CC, CD, and CN. CC is credit for course equivalent to C minus or better. CD is credit for course equivalent to a D, and CN is equivalent to a failing grade in the course. Students seem to appreciate Virginia Tech giving them these options. Some people hate online classes, so that adjustment of like doing things online can be really stressful just because they know they learn better with in-class instruction. So I think giving that option where people are like, I might not even do well in this class, in a class that I probably would have done well in person, and giving them that option to make it pass-fail at the end of the semester, I think that was really nice. I think a lot of students... Um, if their mentality is that they wanted to just like kind of skate by, I think they were going to do that anyways. So I think it could have been a toss up. I think it is nice to have that extra time to figure it out. But, um, as a senior, I know a lot of my peers do have like, um, the mentality where they're like, well, even if I get a 4.0 this semester, my GPA can't go up. So I might as well just do pass fail. Um, for me personally, I am kind of just like write it out and see and do my best because I don't know, I, I want to get a good GPA and see if, like, my GPA will go up. And um, at the end, if, like, if I have, like, one or two courses that I think I want to change the past, so I probably will. But honestly, 
at the most, I think maybe one I would change, but even that's like kind of rare. I think that's a good option given by Virginia Tech. I'm still unsure of what I'm going to do, just as we're still transitioning to online classes. But I like that they gave students the option. I think that's a good thing because it's the first time this is being tested. So if it, if Tech knew that this was going to work in the past, then it would probably make sense to not or make those restrictions a little bit more difficult. But because it's the first time it's testing, you got to give kids the option. It's definitely a luxury. Um but that kind of comes with some consequences just because I feel like GPAs are definitely going to inflate and a lot of people are just complaining and, you know, talking Virginia Tech's ear off, you know, other schools are doing this, other schools are doing this, like we're a very prestigious university and people look at us with such high standards to move any class you want to basically not count towards your GPA, I kind of feel is a little bit silly. I mean, it's obviously beneficial for some people, but I don't know, kind of silly in my opinion. It takes a lot of the stress off the student body because, you know, some of these classes are kind of hard to translate to pass or fail, and or not pass or fail, to translate to online classes. And I feel like some of the teachers are even struggling with it. So the fact that they're a little sympathetic towards the students instead of letting us just struggle as a whole is pretty... You know, it makes the transition for everyone a lot easier. I know, especially for my major in my studio class, pass fail wouldn't really look good for like you know companies I want to intern for and all that. They want to see you know how you're doing. I think that's great that they did that. I think that that's really nice for us because you don't know who is going to get the virus or not. You don't know what situations are going on with kids at home. And the fact that they let us decide the last week is really nice, too, because I, I don't know, like, what I'm going to miss or something. You know what I mean? Like, some people have work, even though. Uh, and so I think that it's really nice of them to be able to let us do that. I think it kind of also sucks for the kids who already put in a lot of effort in the beginning of the semester and then other kids are like oh well, i can take this to my own advantage i think it really helps people um with the transition because i think a lot of people may have had some uncertainty with how their classes were going to be and this kind of helps making sure that they're still able to progress um in their academic program um and not having to worry about entirely the effect that the online classes are going to have for them. It's nice to be able to see where you're standing in the class, especially with this like transition, and then decide like at the end of it, after you've gotten all your grades back, what you want to do. Like, honestly, everyone like that has like a hard class is just going to pass fail it. Uh, basically, just going to have like only their electives. Unless they're getting an A, they're going to pass fail it. That's what I would do. I think that it's going to help appease a lot of the students I know a lot of stress that their grades are going to drop drastically with the online conversion because everybody doesn't learn the same way and I understand that um for a lot of us if we chose a lecture class there was a reason why um I'm not sure if I'm going to take the option yet because I need to see how my classes go so far I think that I'll be okay but I think it's going to help relieve a lot of stress for most students professors have mixed emotions about these grading options I think it's great. Uh, I mean, what else could you do? Uh, you have students who may not have good access or access at all to things that are online. I don't know how they're doing labs since I don't run one. Uh, but if you're taking a, a three-hour course and a one-hour lab, I don't know what they're doing with that. Some students may get frustrated. Uh, I know some students were, were emailing back during the break because they were just anxious about how is this going to work out. So I think making reasonable accommodations as much as you can to help alleviate the stress, as with anything, um, you know, a student takes a class with a, a professor for the first time, their stress, you think, what are the quizzes going to be like? What are the exams going to be like? Well, imagine then you're taking six classes, right? Uh, or five classes this semester and suddenly everything is online and you wonder how am I going to keep up with it? How am I going to do it? It's very different when, um, you know, say at 2.30, I'm supposed to be in uh, Goodwin Hall for whatever class uh, and saying, okay, uh, well, I would be in class at 2.30 today, but I'm not, but Dr. House lectures online, but I'll watch it later. Well, 
later then ends up being Friday. So you're two lectures behind for my class. I mean, it's going to be so easy for students to get overwhelmed. The university had to do something that would allow them to uh, to have some alternatives. So I, I think the decisions were, were good. I'm okay with it from, from my end when we have 2,000 students in the lab. Waiting until the last day will mean that we will do a lot of grading and a lot of time that necessarily wasn't needed. So I would have preferred that the deadline for that was not like so far into the semester because again, 2000 students, if you can imagine the hundreds of hours of grading, then for the students to say, eh, I'm just gonna take it pass fail. <laughs> you know, so there's some, some downsides. I'm glad they're doing it. I understand why they're doing it. I think the deadline's a little later. I'd rather have a commitment from the students sooner. Reagan is not only a student, she is also a teaching assistant, so she has seen the struggles from both sides. It's been definitely different. So I, my professor was going to let me lecture, and he's still letting me lecture, but it's an online lecture. So I'm not getting the same experience that I was hoping to get out of being a TA this semester, especially being an undergrad TA. It's a lot different than being a graduate TA. So I pretty much got to work a lot with the professor, and now since it's online, I email him occasionally, and I just work on my um, lecture that I'll publish. But I was really excited to do the lecture with the students in the classroom and not getting that experience is kind of a letdown. Thank you for watching Tech Total Access Hokies Hunker Down. I'll keep you updated throughout the day on our Instagram.